All right, appreciate everybody for checking back in. Motor City Sports Talk. Um, appreciate the love and support, man. Just keep sharing the videos. The best way you can donate and support the channel. We're going to talk about Andre Drummond at the end of the video. He has opted in to his uh, player option in Cleveland and how if he would have made that you know, decision earlier, the Pistons could have gotten more for him. But first, let's talk about Ed first. And I'm going to kind of probably do a live stream about, you know, um, Troy Weaver's hire. So uh, if I don't get to a live stream today, I do a longer video format, what I thought about the opening press conference when I get the opportunity to watch it. But hey, don't forget to check out our Piston 101 playlist for our Piston live streams. And don't forget to check out our regular Piston Talk playlist for more videos like this. So Ed Stefkowski, Stefanowski, whatever he said, however you pronounce his name, um, said that if the Pistons was healthy, healthy last year, they would have been fighting for the sixth spot, which would mean Reggie, Derrick Rose, Luke Kennard, Blake Griffin, all would have been healthy. I disagree. I just didn't think the team was good enough. Um, I didn't think Reggie was good enough. Luke Kennard, he always injured. Blake Griffin, uh, he'd been injured throughout his career, but you made the decision to play Blake Griffin on one knee in the playoffs, which was meaningless uh, versus Milwaukee. So they made a lot of bad internal decisions. But I don't. I just don't think the team was good enough to to be in the sixth seed. Um, they might have been good enough to compete with Brooklyn for the seventh or whoever got the eighth seed in the East. Um, I forget is it Orlando. Excuse me. But look at the top six teams in the East right now. I mean, Philly is six. Indiana is. And they got Oladipo back. They're five. Uh, Toronto, uh, Indiana, Milwaukee all occupy occupy Miami occupying those top six spots. Boston. I mean, it's just a lot, a lot of really, really good teams, and I just didn't think the Pistons was that good. You know what I'm saying? And when things start to go good, history tells us that Derrick Rose is going to get injured. That's what I said before he got here. History tells us that Reggie Jackson is going to get injured. History tells us that Luke Kennard with his knee tendonitis is going to get injured. History tells us with Blake Griffin, every time the, the Clippers was on the verge of greatness, he went down and Chris Paul went down. So the only main staple – that was there for the Pistons was Andre Drummond. That's the great thing that Drummond brought to the uh, to the table was rebounding and durability. Uh, availability is the best ability. You know what I'm saying? So once you once you look at a situation like that, man, this team just wasn't good enough. You could say if we was healthy, but they never been healthy throughout their entire careers, really. So I mean, at the end of the day, they tried to put it. They tried to make a push one more time, and they failed. And the numbers t told you that even if they made that push you know, for uh, for a championship type of run, and they were healthy, you know, it wasn't going to be a championship type of run. So they got bad intel. They put money over making the right basketball decision moves. And to me, that's Tom Gore's decision. He moved a team to Detroit. He lost a lot of a lot of uh, money, parking money, concession money, all that money he was keeping. And now downtown Detroit, he's sharing that money or not even making that money with the parking garages and stuff of that nature. So, that's the whole situation with that. I think it was a bad decision to to throw it together. On paper, it looked nice last year. I said, well, they might do something this year. But we knew the history of their top players were, were injury prone. We, I mean, everybody knew that. So they should have traded Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond two seasons ago at the trade deadline, and you would have got something for Blake Griffin. You know, you would have got something for Andre Drummond. And you would have been in a better position to rebuild. You know, maybe we did that. We don't find Christian Wood, though. So... It's always this, that, and the third. So I don't believe through his optical, I don't believe what he's saying. I don't think this team would have been a six seed. Too many better teams out east. You know, we dominated Indiana last year, but Indiana dominated better, more better teams. And the difference with Indiana was they got Victor Oladipo back. They got a better coach. Straight up and down. So I don't see even at even the Pistons being, you know, at their best last year with Drummond, with Blake, with Reggie, with Luke, with, you know, you name them. They're not better than they're not gonna be better record than Indiana. They're not gonna be better than Philly. They're not gonna be better than Boston. They're not gonna be better than Toronto. They're not gonna be better than Milwaukee. The only way you become better than them is building the team through the draft and then filling it out with veteran free agents down the line. So you know Ed is a little bit delusional. He can he can spit that bull job to the pool to the uh he can spit that bull job from the pool put all he want to. I'm not buying it. This team was never going to win anything with the core of Blake Reggie. And, and drumming, it just wasn't. They never won nothing throughout their career. Now, if you tell me Blake Andre Drummond became a better defender in the middle, then I believe you. I truly, truly believe you. But you had you had several guys out there who couldn't defend. Drummond, Blake, you know what I'm saying? Reggie don't really defend. Luke Kennard can't defend. Your starting five, you know, unless you put Tony Snell in there, four of your starting five can't defend. 
So how you gonna go? Uh, 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 how you gonna go deep in the playoff run and be the six seed? So it just kind of gives you an insight of what they was thinking. They thought they ceiling was gonna be six, five, four seed, and it wasn't. They're not better than none of the teams healthy above, and then they never been healthy. So how do you look at Derrick Rose and say whatever year he in after the knee injury, he can give you points and spots? He's a spot player. At this point, he should be like Lewis Williams coming off the bench, giving you a little burst here and there. Andre Drummond, he don't do nothing good but rebound and be durable. He don't defend. He don't. Or he ain't no offensive juggernaut. Look at Blake Griffin. He ain't been healthy his whole career. He don't defend. Luke Kennard ain't been healthy since he got to the league. Tendonitis. He don't defend. So if you want to be a top player in the NBA in the Eastern Conference, all the teams I named got good defenders on there. Jimmy Butler uh, with Miami. Bam can defend. Boston got Tatum Brown. They can defend. Philadelphia, Ben Simmons, and when Joel and Embiid in shape, he can defend. Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks, they can defend. So you not, I mean, Indiana backcourt is one of the best defensive backcourts, Brogdon and uh, uh, Victor Oladipo. So like I said before, man, that the sixth seed was a pipe dream. Seventh and eighth, you could fight with Orlando, and you could fight with Brooklyn without Kevin Durant and Kyrie. And even if you did feel like you you was going to reach your potential to be the sixth seed this year, next year when Kevin Durant and Kyrie come back, you're going to bump down to the seventh and eighth. So the rebuild should have, should have happened two seasons ago. Um, remember they lost fifteen or seven out of seventeen games at one point. Ugh. you know. But they, you know, whatever it was, they just kept trying to believe that they was gonna be a good team. So I don't really agree with that comment by Ed. But uh, let's talk about Andre Drummond. He opts in with Cleveland, which if he would have said he would have opt in, uh, he could have been traded from New York or Atlanta for something a lot better. I mean, even the Clippers was considering taking him. But the problem with Andre Drummond was he refused to opt in his contract. Uh, he even threatened Cleveland if they didn't get rid of John Beeline, and I believe this to be true. He he disputed it that if uh, if they brought Beeline back, that he wasn't going to opt in. I wouldn't have believed that because he ain't getting thirty million dollars nowhere else. I think his opt in year is like twenty eight point some million dollars uh, next year. So, but he refused to opt in. He was trying to renegotiate a contract with Atlanta, a negotiated contract with extension with Atlanta. I think he may have had some conversations with New York or something like that. They were saying. And really, he sabotaged the Pistons. You know, people talking about they got so much love for Andre Drummond, but why he didn't do the right thing? First time, first thing he did come in this summer, uh, from the summer to the offseason, and say, oh, you know, I can't wait to be a free agent this year. Like, dude, you can't wait to get out of Detroit. And I'm glad Detroit didn't pay him. It's the stupidest thing you would have done. If you would have paid Drummond an uh, extension, you wouldn't have had nothing but $5 million in cap room. It would have strapped, it would have strapped this, this, this team up really, really bad. And the reason we got two second-round draft picks for Drummond or whatever we got a second for Drummond is because, you know, he didn't want to he didn't want to he didn't want to commit to opting in that player option, but now he in Cleveland he opting in because he know he's not gonna get that money nowhere else. You know, Detroit got a lot of money. I'm not sure who else got. Looks Toronto gonna have a lot of money, but they not looking to add Andre Drummond. So they when they found out they value his team, his agent, his manager, whoever he got, they found out his value. They could have helped the Pistons out and said, you know what, we gonna take less. You know, we we gonna we gonna opt in, or we gonna take a lesson extension, and the Pistons could have got something for him. But he did all of this shit to opt in his final year of his deal. At that at that at that point, if he was gonna opt in, the Pistons should have kept him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, uh, they could have kept him, but it had to be him or Blake. Um, they should have traded both of them two years ago, like I said. But like I said, you live and you learn. You know, when you when you looking at you know when you when you looking at the best scenario you being optimistic you got to be realistic all right you can say our, our roof is a six seed but our, our does history tell you that Drummond can anchor us there when blake go down a drum no the team just wasn't good enough they try to throw something together they should have rebuilt it they should have uh, you know traded all their assets and then started over but it's cool we had to rebuild we about a year behind but but we, we can really say we on track i'm gonna say that the reason we so behind we traded so so much assets for blake griffin but finding Diambo, finding Blake Griffin, giving out, getting Malachi, I like Bruce Brown. Those, those kind of, those kind of give you bare minimum role players. So now you can add the big faces here. You can add the big chips. You can add the Lamelo. You can add Cole. You can add uh, the dude from Iowa State, or you can add the big fella from USC. So now you can add pieces around them. So I think it can be a lot worse scenario with the rebuild for the Pistons. I think they're right on par. I think they could have been ahead of schedule. Um, a little bit more, but I'm going to enjoy the process. But, hey, let me know what you think about the video. Check out our Piston playlist. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
Twitter's the fastest way to reach out to me. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash App, PayPal, in the description. One time for the one time we done.